Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Fate Grand Order video, and it is almost upon us. That's right, today I'm going to be talking about the Arctic Summer event, which will be my second time recording this, because the first time, not only was it almost an hour long, I also sounded way tired, and it sounded like 30 minutes in, I just gave up. <laughs> so hopefully this one has more energy, but let's get right into it, because we got a lot to cover, not a lot of time, and my mom's eventually going to come home and ruin the recording. So let's go. So date and time, we have finally a time for maintenance, which is the, the stream, I believe, is going to be at 7, but the actual maintenance starts at 9 p.m. and then goes to 1 p.m. So yeah, the event starts on the 17th, but as always, it's technically the 18th when the first time you play it. So there we go. But that's going to be, yeah, and this specific broadcast campaign is going to be there. So uh, I should be watching it at the same time. I'll, I may not say anything in chat, but I'll be there in spirit. But anyway, let's take a look into the actual event, Arctic Summer World. You are going to need to have cleared Fuyuki if you want to join this one. This event in Japan lasted three weeks, so I expect the same thing to happen here. So that would mean it would end on one, two, three. It would end on the 7th of August, if that's correct. If I'm going the 10th to, let's see, 10th to the 31st would be one, two, three. This one would be one, two, three. Yeah, it would be the 7th of August. Uh, what style of event it is, it is a point style reward event meaning that you're gonna get a bunch of points which also means that you that's how you unlock the new main quest so you have to make sure to get these points which are the visitor number points from this point on i'm just gonna call them points because no matter even if they come up with a fancy name for them i just it's easier just to call them points also on the first day you'll be able to get the main quest in act one and then as you get points you get to get the next main quest acts it's 2000 10,000, 4,000, 100,000, 200,000, 300,000 and you want to be up to date with these as much as you can because in this event, which we can see in the event mechanics right here, um, it's going to be like a reform thing. So we're, one of the, the materials that we're going to be getting is the natural arctic ice. It's one of the other drop rates along with the other things that we get already. Um, and you get that and clear special quests to improve the areas of the arctic summer world. Uh, once the areas are improved, the number of uh, the atmosphere, the era, which area will change, and then you'll get be able to get a lot more points and a lot of more items related to the things in there. The important thing to note is that this thing right here is not a hey claim this when it's at its max. It's actually a, your full claim it already. So if you're gonna go to bed, uh, make sure that when before you go to bed, you collect everything that's in there and then keep going forward. What do I mean by what's in there? Here's what you get from the actual uh, reform quests, which is going to be after you clear main quest one, you'll unlock the ability to get Flower Park, and Flower Park will give you QP. Thrilling Artist Land will give you 5 EXP. The Hawaiian Genji will give you uh, Primordial Langua. The uh, North Pole Magical Ice Castle will give you Permafrost Ice Crystals. Oni Haunted House is the Void Refuse. And the Mini Serba Fest Hall is where you will get Forbidden Pages. And you can see here, as you level it up, you'll get better number of visitors plus time increment of each level. And you just collect it, get your stuff, easy enough to do, not very hard. You can see here the requirements per level changes for each one of them, with this one being the highest one of them. So just get, collect it, shouldn't be that hard. And as always, the point rewards are the point rewards. There's a total of three summon tickets in there, so look forward to that, I guess. Um, really annoying, <laughs> to be honest, that you need 5.5 million points and then they will give you three summon tickets. One ticket per banner that they released for summer. It still wouldn't be enough because there's four summer banners this year. But anyway, that's the basics of that. Um, in terms of the shop, you'll be able to trade in the, uh, the Valkyries Kayusha, the Arctic Dome, and the Aurora Frappe and Natural Arctic Ice. This is the gold one. This is the silver one, this is the bronze, and this is the extra one. This one you'll use to get the berets, which are what you use to level up the Valkyries to Ascensions. Uh, in terms of what's actually available in here, it's pretty the basic stuff. For the gold um, for the gold material, you'll unlock Domen's uh, Yukata along with a Summer Ibuki simple costume. Along, there's also the ability to unlock Fist of Hail, two of them, which will be cost you 200 of each of them, as well as medals for one of the three that you pick. So you don't get like 30 in total, it's actually just 10, and it just, the art changes depending on which one of the Valkyries you end up picking. Uh, crystallized Lore, a mirror, the, uh, 10 eggs, 10 mirror, 20 shells, 30 of the 
Twilight Ceremonial Blade, one Code Remover, and then a basic statue of all the seven classes of gold. And that will repeat for the other ones as well, along with a Golden Attack Foe and a Golden HP Foe. For in total, you'll need about 5,950 of these if you want to collect everything that's in here. Uh, for the Arctic Dome, that long that unlocks uh, Yang Shin's uh, training wear, which is his summer outfit, along with the one. This is where you get another Fist of Hail. Again, another 10 medals, another Crystallized Lore, another Code Remover, um, and Dawn-like Reactor Core, 20 of them. Uh, 20 Permafrost Ice, 20 Scales of Fantasies, 20 medals, the Silver Statues, and 1 HP Foe here at the end here. And of course, the ability to exchange for the Gold Material, if you so wish to do that. Aurora Frappe. As Clapius's a summer rescue unlock, um, fit one fist of hail just like the others, ten metals just like the other ones, code remover, and the thing that's actually different is the octopulate twin crystals, which are twenty of them that you can exchange for it. Homunculus babies, the gunpowder, the void refuse, one golden attack foe, twenty silver HP and attack foes, fifty-five EXP, one hundred four EXP, and one hundred three silver EXP, and. Uh, Arctic Dome for whatever reason if you want to change it and for this one you need 4,500 if I didn't mention Arctic Dome it's 5,450 all very basic stuff some nice material in here specifically here they have the troll material that's pretty nice um and yeah that's basically it if you want to unlock the challenge quest you have to have cleared Solomon so even though this only requires Fuyuki if you actually want to do this uh you have to have cleared the epilogue in the event and then also Solomon so keep in mind of that. These extra quests will unlock as you're unlocking more levels in your stuff. As you can see here, upgrade the Hawaiian Genji to level 5. You'll unlock these style of things. And you'll get Sync Quartz for doing them and stuff. And that is the basics of the event. It's a very simple do quest. Get it up until grind up your levels. Simple. Get in, get out. It's over three weeks. It seems like an excessive amount of time, but sure, it's three weeks. Now... In terms of the event bonuses, if you don't already know, all the Summer 5s and the Summer 4 Welfare will get 100 Protect Damage Up and 50% Bond Bonus. 50% Extra Damage and 20% to Bond Bonus for the Summer 4s and the any of the men that are featured, which is Asclepius and Young Chin. Uh, as, and Ark, for some reason. Don't know why, but she is in here. She's like, you spent it on it, you're going to get me. And then obviously all the old dudes from the Summer are here as well. Along with Mash, who gets 50% attack and 5% bond to the party members, which is just nice. Okay, and we'll get into the event. Uh, in terms of the event command codes, we have Ice Warrior, which goddamn really nice art, and uh, Fist of Fail. Fist of Fail, what the hell? Fist of Hail. Ice Warrior is a starting NP of 50% when you get it to max bond level, so that's really nice for a new player. Um, it also has Barg in her summer costume. In, in a summer costume? Would you believe me if I said <laughs> across th that Varg has a summer outfit in her C in a CE and in her final ascension art for her summer unit, she does not actually have one in her summer <laughs> unit. <laughs> they fear the ability of her being in a swimsuit. They absolutely fear it. And this uh, Bazat one is also very good with Fist of Hail. This one's also a starting stars of uh, 20 when you get a max limit broken. Quick and crit damage up, was, which is okay, especially if you're going for a quick uh, quick and crit type of dealio. The way I always look at a lot of the star starting star ones is that typically I go, why would I ever use this over Golden Catches the Carp? And I kept saying that in a lot of videos until finally someone said, hey old man, some of us weren't playing back then. And I said, fair enough. <laughs> I guess you don't have Golden. I just assumed everyone was back then and has Golden Catches the Carp. But anyway, those are the event CEs. And then in terms of event command codes, we have Child of the Snowfield, Mitsurushi no Surugi, and Goodnight V. For the five-star one, it's when attacking with the engraved card, remove one latest debuff from self and heal 250 HP. From Mitsurugi no Surugi, it is engraved card star absorption increased by 50% in the engraved card's ignore defense buffs. Uh, Goodnight V is when attacking with the engraved card, removes one latest critical rate up from the enemy and it's successfully removed, decreases the target's defense against arts cards by 10% for three turns. So, nice command cards right there. Uh, in terms of one final thing before we actually get into the new things, is that I have to look at the... I, we're not going to be talking about them today, but this is the best way to look at the new craft essences. So for women, it's Twin Tail, cr uh, Cruising Date, and Jigangshi Attack. 
Uh, for the men, it is Infinity Blue, Upcoming Anglers, and Hello Arctic. None of them are anything special to look at, as far as I can tell. Um, this is actually kind of nice, but yeah, I don't, I don't, nothing really pops out at me. Feel free to tell me if one of these is actually insanely busted and I'm just wrong, and I will gladly make a follow-up saying, hey, I was wrong about this. <laughs> actually, this turns out to be insane, but I don't see anything like the Prisma Ilya C limited CEs where it's like, man, this is insane if you get it. These look like just very nice effects on top of something and then very nice art to go with it. Um, as you can see here, I think in the last video, there was like 20 minutes of me looking at this art before realizing I was only focusing the, the, it does not show fully. If you know what I'm saying, I was looking at it and I was like looking at trying to appreciate the fruit. And then I realized when you click on here, it don't show the fruit. It shows uh, something else completely. But anyway, those are going to be these, um, the, uh, craft essences for them in the male one, obviously you'll be focused on the males. On the female banner will be the female banners, and on the summoning campaigns for the other ones, it'll have a mixture of both. As you can see here, both in two and three. So yeah, there you go. We're gonna should be in theory very easy to get the man one. Okay, let's actually start talking about the units. I'm gonna just group up together all the men in one single go because this is gonna be the easiest way without making this video go almost an hour long. Um, we'll go over these. This is uh. This is, first of all, I know his name is not Asclepius. That's just what me and my brother call him. It's like Asclepius. That's, uh, Asclepius is like actually how you're supposed to say his name. Uh, we say it the way we say it because that's basically our nickname for him. And I think it's funny to call him Asclepius. Uh, and I also got, uh, I learned that it's not Quing, it's Chin. I'm pretty sure it's Chin. At least based off of the, the pronunciation videos I watched, they said, yeah, it's just Chin. So Yang Chin easy enough in terms of the units and, and not just their names young chin is a i think he like his he's gotten a lot of buffs that makes him seem like he's a really interesting unit back when he first released he seems really bad he was like really bad but now he seems like pretty solid i think we're only missing one of his strengthenings which is to his first skill so i'm kind of interested in maybe taking a more deep look at him when i look at the banner for when that happens which i believe is going to happen in halloween but for the most part, um, yeah, this is the one. This is going to be a second strength thing, and it shows up for Halloween 2022, which should be this year. Uh, in terms of his actual, like, summer outfit, which is right here, I think this is a really nice summer outfit. Um, he's not storylocked or anything, so you can just randomly get... This might be one of the four stars you just may randomly get, and it's a pretty nice costume. So, showing off his... And wait a minute, his tattoos aren't in the... Are they? No, they're there. Okay, yeah. Either way, really nice art. Uh, good looking dude. Good looking dude is what I'll say for Yang Chen. And Asclepius, I think he's a very good story lock servant. I actually have mine MP4. Um, it makes me really want that last copy, but just based off how rough these summer banners are going to be, it is not going to be possible for your boy. So I'm just going to have to pass him on. But I think if you're going in this banner for for Doman, you get, Ascla uh, you get Asclepius and I think you'll be perfectly happy with him. I think he's a pretty solid, um, just a little support unit. You can use him with Chen Gong for silly, dumb things. But in terms of actually use him in an event stuff, he has like Bond. Uh, he has like a, a party-wide bond thing, so I think he's interesting, especially for a three-star. And just to show off the reason I show I thought Yang Quinn was interesting, it's because he gives himself 50% crit damage on his noble phantasm. So I was like wondering, like, wait a minute, if you do this three times, it's 150%. You'd have to get two codes, for, uh, two quick cards for him at the end to do, I guess, maximum damage with him. But I don't know, it still sounds like a silly enough quest to try for something. And finally, Doman, he is an AoE, um... Quick unit, half of the t video of the hour long one I did last time was spent on just going over what he does. Uh, Cause he's an insanely stupid unit. I think in a NNA currently, probably one of the best quick AOE units. Some people have told me like, hey, Karen's really good. You shouldn't underestimate her. I think, this, and one person was specifically saying, I think she's better than Doman. But plenty of other people are like, no, Doman, Doman's legit. The only thing that's bad in terms of the, oh, I forgot. For Asclepius' uh, summer outfit, I think it's a pretty good outfit. I prefer him with the mask on, though. Uh, I think it's very funny that for Doman... Has a little chest out in the final Ascension art. No chest out. They said, cover him up. Don't want to see him. So that's very funny. So Doman's a very good unit. 
he was featured in the last one. I think he does come back one more time in terms of someone, if you're wondering when does this unit come back, I think this is the same for um, Asclepius over here in terms of when do they come back. Asclepius will be here literally this year for Lost Belt 4 if you want to attempt to get him and you're already planning to summon for Arjuna Altar or something. Um, no, it's not this year. Yes, it is this year. Is it this year? No, it is, it is next year. Next year, there will be a banner with uh, Arjuna Altar on it and him in it. And if you want to try go for it here, you definitely can because he will be featured on it. Either him or Janaka. <laughs> no, he's not on Janaka. You have to literally only go for him with Arjuna Altar. That's something to keep in mind if you're someone like waiting for maybe getting more copies, but you're not interested in Domen or you already have one copy of Domen and you're uninterested in more copies. In terms of for Domen, he's very similar. This will not be his last banner. He will be back. God, you have so much lore dump, my guy. For Deal Call Campaign 2, which also features Muramasa and uh, Rasputin in it, and that will be in September 2023, so that will be sometime next year in September. So something to keep in mind. He's an insanely good unit, and he's a really good unit. I don't blame someone for going for him, but for me personally, I usually like to prioritize the women <laughs> during summer, <laughs> so I will go for them. I understand not everyone's like that, and that's why they do the man banner, but that's how I do it. Now, in terms of the actual free-to-play unit, we'll start with that one, uh, go over it very quickly. So the funny thing about this unit, which is actually the most important thing about this unit, is that they're actually six units separately. So Orlinde is also Orlinde and then Geshkogel. Hildir is Hildir and Olrun. Uh, Thrud is Thrud along with Rindir. And all of them have different, like, like this costume, slightly different. Here we go here, just slightly different. Here's something to keep in mind though. You can only pick one of these. This event has not returned on JP yet. That doesn't mean it won't return, it just means it hasn't returned yet. Um, so that means that if you're getting one of these uh, Valkyries, you have to really be careful about the one pick because this is going to be your one Valkyrie for the next two years until the others get released alongside them. So make sure to pick your choice uh, wisely. They're all the same in terms of stats and everything else. The only thing that slightly changes is that they're, um, uh, this, this changes. Not the effect, the art changes. As you can see here, that has a completely different name from the last weapon. So this art changes and stuff like that, but the effect is the same, which is 10% to art's performance and Valkyrie allies. Which is actually funny because it seems like you want to, who, who are the Valkyries on here? Literally just them. And they made it so you can't get the other two at the moment. It is the most infuriating design ever. But let's go into the actual unit instead of me just complaining. Orlinda, she's too quick. Uh, the Valkyrie is too quick. Two arts, one buster. Uh, three hits on quick, four hits on arts, three hits on buster, five hits on extra. The first skill is the SMG SAM uh, 66. B, increases on quick performance, arts performance, and crit damage for three attacks, three turns. 20% to quick. 20% to arts, 100% to crit damage on a cooldown of 5. Her second skill is the Valkyrie style team combat B+, increases the party's attack for 3 turns, and grants party's evasion for 1 attack 3 turns, increases the MP generation rate of Valkyrie allies for 3 turns, 20% to attack, 20% uh, to Valkyrie MP rate on a cooldown of 6. The third skill is the War Maidens Trough EX, charges 1 ally's MP gauge by 20% and recovers their HP, gains crit stars, 3,000 heal, 20 crit stars, and a cooldown of 6. Uh, the one skill is Present Concealment. B, Divinity A is the other skill, along with the append skill for the third, which is an anti-saber attack damage aptitude, because they just absolutely hate Sigurd. Uh, rank B Noble Phantasm is the Figia of Valkyrie, Last Assault Heavenly Spears Halo. Um, hits 10 times its arts, deals damage to all enemies, 40% chance to instant kill demonic enemies. Which is at MP level 1, it's 450%, and then at the final level, it's 750. Um, and then the overcharge effect is uh, deals extra damage to earth attributes, which is 150% at level 1. And if you get it to the final charge level, it's 200%. Um, and because this, it's a, it's a very nice unit. And because this instant kill doesn't proc first, I think it's similar to Saber Shiki, where you'll get the MP gain if the enemy dies, which is important. I think that's how it goes. If it's not how it goes, feel free to correct me. But I'm pretty sure I looked at the wording. This is similar to Saber Shiki, which Saber Shiki just got that buff, which changes that. We got it early on NA, and Nido Chris says this activates first, so therefore you don't get the MP gain from Nido Chris, I think. 
something like that. I forgot, uh, honestly. I'm not 100%. I, I very rarely use Demonic Foes because I was waiting for the Saber Shiki update. And then I still have not used them since the, the last time I did it. So you can feel free to correct me on that so I know it for next time. But that is the Valkyrie. I think it's a very cool unit. It's a very, like, um... The one thing that's kind of an issue is that it's an Assassin AoE. Which means they just do slightly damage. But in terms of uh, AoE, uh, in terms of AoE, in terms of stuff they're doing, I really do like that they just give themselves 100% crit damage for, like, basically three attack cards, which is very crazy. Even at level one, 50% crit damage. Kind of crazy. And a cooldown of five, too, so it's not, like, a crazy thing to get back, or it's not hard to get back. I really feel like this unit, though, is built to be, like, used with the Valkyries for a really silly team. And it's kind of a bummer you can't actually use all three of the Valkyries. Like, imagine if you could use them and then all their bond points, and then you have the world's most silliest... <laughs> it, first of all, almost no one would be able to do it because um, that's impossible. But it would, in theory, have a unit with over 160% crit damage just for existing, which I think is pretty damn funny. Um... And then also have insane MP generation rate, which would be like 60% to all of them. It's interesting. I think it's a cool idea for a um, free unit. And it's a free, so everyone's going to get it. And you'll get a free level 5, which is 750% damage. Which should help with some of the problems with assassins. The only thing I'm not 100... Because assassins deal low damage. The only thing I'm unsure of is the instant kill. But thankfully it's only on demonic enemies. So even if it does work the, the bad way which means the MP gain doesn't trigger. At least it only really does that against demonic enemies, so it shouldn't be too bad as long as you don't fight demonic dudes with them. Um, and yeah, 150% turf attribute dudes. Also pretty good effect. So there you go, free unit. Choose carefully is what I'll say for the Valkyries. This will change everything. Now in terms of the actual summoning campaign, the two women. We'll start with Gareth Saber. Cloak. I'm getting closer and closer to the time. Dog! Gareth Saber. She has one quick, two arts, two buster, three, two, four, five hit extra. Active skill, quick transformation EX, increases own arts and buster performance for three turns, and then gains some crit stars. 20 to arts and buster and 20 crit stars, and cooldown to five. Her second skill is a Sunlight Gareth B+, grants one ally's gut status for one time three turns, gain crit stars every turn for three turns, and 500% chance to grant self the Sunlight Battlefield buff for three turns, 3000 HP, 10 star regen, and cooldown of six. Her third skill is the Robrius Art Inside, the Red Sword C, increases own buster performance for three turns, charges on MP gauge, grants self debuff on attack buff for three turns, and then inflict burn by 300 damage for three turns to enemies when normal attacking. 30% to Buster, 20% to NP, and 6 turn cooldown. Uh, damn, 20% 20, 20 to NP is unfortunate. Magic resistance B plus and writing B. The reason is, is I'll go into it pretty soon. Her third skill is an anti-saber attack damage aptitude, because trust no one, not even your little sister. Gawin. win. And her rank C noble phantasm, C++++, is the lupus strike fang, the true wolf maiden's unsheathing strike. It is a rank C++++ plus plus plus, uh, Noble Phantasm for Buster. Hits four times. Deals damage to all enemies. At MP level 1, it's 300% damage. And if you get it all the way to MP level 5, it's 500%. The overcharge effect is increase on attack for one turn. And then a further increase on attack on the Sunlight Battlefield for one turn. And because she's able to provide it for herself, you should be able to always get this. Almost always. Um... 10% attack up and 20% sunlight attack up, and then on the final overcharge, it's 30% and 40%. That's Saber Gareth. Um, she can't be really used for looping, unless you do some real silly things. The reason is, is that for busters, you need at least 30% if you want to do a full loop combo. If you are 30% starting NP, unless you're using some other kind of CEs like Kaleidoscope, which meaning, meaning the best way to do it is typically... A 50% starting NP, because that's what most event gives nowadays, is max limit broken, a 50% starting um, thing. And then follow it up with an additional 20% from mana loading, and then you provide the last 30% here. And then you do double Koyan, dupe dupe, and then at the final turn, um, Oberon, so that the 30% can work with his 70% to get cooldown to 6. She's not able to use the very basic bread and butter kind of like buster loop thing, so if you want to actually try and loop with her, you would have to go out of your way to do it. But I also don't think she's really meant to be a looper. I think she's meant with the guts specifically and being able to give it to anyone. I think she's more meant for like specific kind of challenge quest type scenarios. Which ones? I don't actually know, unfortunately. Um, so she seems to be a pretty okay unit, but it's my girl Gareth, as you can see here. 
Wonderful outfit here. Look at that dog. Dog on the second stage. Gets an outfit. Dog disappears on the stage three. Sees that she needs to glow up. So he says, respectfully, I'm going to leave. Dog comes back. It's rest time. Why wouldn't you love it? The only, the only negative I'll say about this, no dog sprite. Update Gareth. Buff her. Add the dog to the sprites. Is what I'm saying. Everyone else will probably say something else. Saying you maybe you should buff the skills a little bit. Not me, man. I say buff her sprites. <laughs> so she gets a dog in there. But yeah, that's Saber Gareth. I am looking forward to potentially getting her. Because I'm going to be going for Lady Avalon. And I'll gladly find a way to use her during summertime. But I don't know. I have to go out of my way to figure out a way to actually use her. But I found a way with uh, Bardigus. Which is during... Um, a challenge not own challenge quest but the grail fronts so there's always ways to find uh ways to find units you just got to go out of your way not think in the box of something when it comes to aoe units but anyway that's gareth saber can't wait for her and finally lady avalon she's a pretender um not actually named merlin uh lady avalon she is one quick three arts one buster four hits on quick three hits on arts four hits on buster five hits on extra First skill is light upon that hand B. Increases one ally's arts performance for three turns and then increase their H max HP for three turns. Increase their critical damage for one turn. I really hope you can't hear my brother snoring in the background. <laughs> He's very sleepy right now. Arts 50%, the max HP is 3000, the crit damage is 100% on a cooldown of six. Her second skill is the Blooming Flower of the Summer Nights D. Increases party's attack for three turns, charges party's MP gauge by 20% and then overcharges party's MP gauge by Charver charges party's MP by one stage for one time, three turns. 20% attack on a cooldown of six. And our third skill is the Succubus Ridge EX. Grants party invincibility for one turn and then reduce all enemies' MP gauge by one every turn for one time. Unstackable. Prevents enemies' MP from being charged for one tick at start of next turn. Charges on MP based on the number of enemies. The amount of MP charge is multiplied by the number of enemies. Uh, one enemy is 20% MP at level 10 and then based off of the number of enemies you'll get even more. In terms of this, there's something to take note of for the MP turn charge minus. It works similar to MP seal. Enemy's charge is not drained in the same turn that it is used. Enemy's charge is prevented from gaining a tick for the next turn. MP turn change minus can be used even if the enemy has no charge. And if the MP turn change minus is used when an enemy's NP is full, the enemy will use their NP and the effect of this skill is applied the turn after when they have no charge. So something to keep in mind with her. Uh, passive skills, Territory Creation D, Item Construction A+, Mixed Blood EX, High Speed Divine Words Bewitching EX, Independent Manifestation A, um, and the High Speed Divine Words gives her a starting MP with 20%, and then the Mixed Blood will also charge her MP by 5%. Very good. A pen skill for the third skill is an anti-saber attack damage aptitude, and her rank A Noble Phantasm is the Winds of Avalon, extending an invitation towards Utopia, rank A anti-unit. Increases party's max HP for 3 turns, charges party's MP gauge every turn for 3 turns, 3000 max heal and MP regen is 5% at level 1, and if you get her all the way to level 5, 5000 max HP, 10% MP regen, and then also gain crit stars every turn for 5 turns based off of overcharge. Uh, at level 1, it's 5 stars, and if you get her all the way to the final charge level, it's 25, and I think it's pretty realistic to say you could probably get, even at MP1, a charge of 2 or 3. Uh, which is 200% or 300% potentially, um, even though you have her at MP level 1 because of her stacking. But, but anyway, Lady Avalon. Lady Avalon's a very good unit and very surprising to hear, but she is a, she's basically a Merlin for arts. It's pretty tough for arts, not because they have it bad, it, but it's because they have it too good. Castoria is such an insane unit. When you're looking to make a new support for arts, you have to go further beyond what Castoria does. Not in terms of you can't outshine Castoria, because if they make an arts unit that's just up a straight up upgrade of Castoria, we're going to be in a lot of problems. <laughs> this game is going to fall into huge disarray with that level of um, power creep. But you can make a unit that is focusing on something that she's not really. So if Castoria is more for looping general purposes, more AoE stuff and is a pretty good defensive unit. This one is a more defensive unit, but also more attack based because you're actually able to give crit damage. That's the one thing that Castoria can't do is that she doesn't provide crits and I don't believe she provides uh, stars either. She provides protection and other stuff like that. But the protection she provides is based off of her Noble Phantasm. 
And this one it has is attached to a skill, and it also has this other skill. The one thing that's kind of bad about this one is that you have to maybe think about it a little bit more. So you have to make sure not to use it when the MP when the enemy's about to slap you in the face with an MP. Use it the turn before or something, and then go for it. But I think she's a very cool unit. Um, even though I said she's not really uh, someone that you would use with looping because, hey, 20% attack, 20% MP gauge for the entirety of her kit is not very good. The thing to keep in mind with her is that unlike Merlin, who can kind of suffer a little bit from his lack of being able to give more than just 20%, um, when it comes to Buster specifically, in Arch, you don't have to worry about that because if you use her with Castoria, Castoria will be more than enough with the MP gain and everything, though. It will be perfectly fine. Um, some units maybe will be a little bit different, but this is just if you just want to use Lady Avalon. Like, if you don't even have Lady Avalon, um, if you don't even have Castoria, you can just use a friend Castoria. Or if you don't even have Lady Avalon, you can just use Castoria and a friend Lady Avalon for when you need her. And she'll be very useful when there are specific challenge quests where you can't use double Castoria and you can just use Lady Avalon. So I think, overall, very good unit. Obviously not cannot not better than castoria because that'd be an extremely hard thing but she's doing something different and i think she's doing it well um and the other thing to take note of is because oh shit well i wasn't able to finish in time before people came home and now more people are going to bed so i'm gonna wrap up the video now thankfully i was able to get there at the end i don't remember what i was saying about lady avalon she's good i don't know how much more you need me to say to justify using her. You're able to use her perfectly fine because Art's in a great place. There we go. Bingo Bongo. Give me the girl who lives in Rongo. She doesn't live in Rongo Minion. Damn it. Bikini. The one negative I'll say about her is she only has one summer outfit. Give more. Oh, I remember. It was Oberon. Her name's not Merlin, so she can actually be used with Oberon because Oberon only cares if you are specifically named Merlin and not that you have the trait that is like also Merlin, which is very funny. But yeah, that's the end of the video. It was still 30 minutes long, even with me trying to very quickly go over everything. Um, for these other two summoning campaigns, um, I will have their own video talking about them. But I ran out of time a little bit near the end because I would have probably wanted a little bit more time to focus on the man banner but i really don't think for the most part a lot of people are going for it except for fans who are really big fans of doman i think most people are kind of focused in on the others but i will say specifically for doman if you are able to get scotty doman is actually a very good quick aoe unit and would be excellent for someone who's like maybe starting out and they're like you know i need a quick support and i also need someone to actually do the quick damage You'll be pretty uh, solid with um, Scotty and Doman. And for Lady Avalon, I was talking about like, hey, there's some units who just literally use Lady Avalon and Castoria and you'll be fine. Summer Buki <laughs> can grind with Zhu Fu and Castoria. She'll be fine with Lady Avalon <laughs> instead. She'll do perfectly good. So I think it's uh, interesting times. What A good thing to, men to keep up is that if you are brand new and you are trying to pick your battles, pick them wisely. Um, it's going to be very rough. This is a very rough time. It's going to be a very rough banner. I've been saving for two years for it, so I already know I can get Summer Ibuki, and I think I can guarantee summon one of these two, Scotty or Lady Avalon. Me and my brother are going to have a summon video. I think I'll go maybe around five summons there and then see how things go. I really do. I'm going to be happy of just getting at least a Buki at the very least, but I wouldn't mind coming back with either one of these two, mainly because I want to run more quick and I want to run a more interest, uh, a different kind of arts teams maybe, especially for challenge quest type scenarios. Even though I think Double Castoria is perfectly fine and you can use Tamamo as well. She's defensive, but it's a different kind of defensive. That's why I was saying like I really do like her design because she's also defensive, but she's a different kind of defensive from Tamamo, where Tamamo is more stall defensive. She's more, yes, you're defensive, but you're also on the attack with crit damage stuff and stuff like that. So it's a little bit faster form of defense. But anyway, I've yapped on long enough. Thank you very much if you made it all the way to the end of the video. Um, as always, you can show support by leaving a like, commenting, and subscribing. Which plenty of people have been doing lately, and I greatly appreciate it. Um, 
it's <laughs> people it's dudes like that that make me go like I didn't like the video I did last time even though I spent an hour of my life recording it and I did an entire breakdown and list of everything and I didn't save it because I didn't think I would be redoing that video because I was like I already got it all saved up and then it turned out <laughs> Then I had to redo the video because as I was watching the video, I was like going halfway through it. I was like, hey, everybody, how's it going? Like at a certain point, the the Persona 3 song overtook me. <laughs> it was like, I can't release this. But anyway, hopefully this is a little bit better. Feel free to tell me about any of the things I didn't know. Like, um, Yang Chen, tell me how he is nowadays. Um, if you have a more experience with Garrus Saber on Japan, I would love to hear it. But I, she's not really one of the summer units. Uh, she's not really one of the summer units most people talk about the reason is is that she doesn't have gigantic booba but anyway that's the end of the video everyone finally thank you very much see you guys next time peace out i forgot to hit stop recording